Okay, welcome to another video. What we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the very latest snapshot available from Ferran OS, which was released just a few days ago. Reading through the release announcement is quite a big update, so I'm pretty excited to see what's new. We're in the live environment right now, and the ISO size for this one is about 2.2 GB, and it uses ZSTD compression, so using the live session should feel a whole lot faster. So what we're going to do, as per usual, is install it natively onto the main computer here, and then take a little look around. So it's using the Calamaris installer, and I do believe it's had some visual updates in this version to tie it in with the rest of the whole look and feel of Ferran OS. So British English is the one, and we're going to be using this Sabrent NVMe here, but it's not the poor old one we have been putting through a bit of abuse. I've upgraded him to his older brother of the one terabyte. So we're going to be doing the erase disk and letting the installer create the partitions for us. So a very simple two partition layout, one for our EFI and then the rest all assigned to root using the ext4 file system. Now if I remember correctly, Ferran also does create a swap file, but we'll double check that once we are installed and at the desktop. So next. And that's it, so you might have noticed we didn't have any options to create a user account. That will come when we first start up and finish off with the Ferran OS setup. So what we're going to do, as soon as I press install now, I'll be starting my stopwatch. And we can see exactly how long it takes to install, and I'll be back once it's finished. Okay, installation has complete, and that took no time at all, clocking in at around about 2 minutes and 34 seconds. Do remember though that when we first start up, we'll also have to do a very quick user setup, which will take about 30 seconds, so you can add that to your overall install time. But as far as installations go, it doesn't really get much easier than that. So with that being said, let's reboot and check out Ferran OS. Okay, so here we are at the Ferran OS setup. Unfortunately, it's on my other screen, so I'm going to have to bend my neck for now until we're actually into the desktop. So again, we want British English, and we want to choose Europe London, so we're just going to position our cursor right about there, which should be good enough. It is indeed, and next. English UK is indeed the layout, and let's just test our keyboard out like we always do to make sure it's all working as it should, and next. Okay, user account time. So as the bird is the logo, we're going to call this one Bird Boy. There we go. And as per usual, we'll also be logging in automatically. Okay, so I do believe that's the last part of the setup. And it's going to configure the locales, create the user accounts, and then we should be good to go. Okay, and here we are at our Ferran OS desktop. And actually, I really do appreciate the overall look and feel that you get out of the box of Ferran OS. I think they've done a really good job with their implementation of KDE. Now, we are going to begin with the Ferran OS sort of welcome tour. It's not the same as the welcome screen, and I think eventually it might even be replacing the welcome screen. So let's start the tour. Okay, transfer files to Ferran OS. Obviously, we've got no files to transfer from a previous version, but if we did, it would be a very simple process of just going and restoring your data. So very nice to be included in your welcome tour. Next. Okay, so now we are going to install our restricted codecs for videos, music, and more. We shouldn't need to pause the video. I don't think this is going to take too long. Perfect. Now we can move to the next step. And here we are at my favorite part of Ferran OS, which is the different desktop layouts you can choose out of the box. So there are different distributions out there that do a similar thing with the different desktop layouts, but I don't think any of them do it quite as well as Ferran OS. So out of the box, we have Ferran OS default, tablet mode, familiar, Redmond, Cupertino, and my favorite of all, Ubuntu Unity. Now we're going to go into these in a bit more detail once we've got through the video a bit more, but while we're in here, let's see how easy it is and how quick it is to transition between them from the welcome tour. So let's go to Redmond Layout. Okay, that took no time at all and it's now transferred the entire way we're going to use our desktop. So that's pretty cool. And let's go back to the default. And like I said, we'll spend a bit more time in these in just a moment. Next. Okay, using the desktop applications menu. So some of these steps might seem a bit tedious for those of us that are quite used to this way of working but for a new user it's a really good way to get them acclimatized to the system so it's a good thing to have in a distribution so while we're there though here is our application launcher and by default it is the simple menu but if we right click and go to show alternatives you'll see we have quite a few included including the tiled menu which is going to emulate the look and feel of the windows start menu with the tiles and all of that good stuff and that will be utilized in one of the different desktop layouts so we'll check that out too Let's keep going. Next up, we have using the desktop window management. So this is just letting you know how to actually use your task manager here, which you'll notice in Ferran is centered, which I really like, and it will grow every time you add an application to it, but staying dead center. And it kind of reminds me a bit like the panel on Chrome OS. Next, 
Using the desktop system tray again, very straightforward stuff, but we can just click that and then check our status and notifications. Next, okay, using the desktop search, so this is about KRunner and it appears it uses a different shortcut from standard sort of KDE desktops where it's Alt 2, Alt space on here, it's Alt F2, which isn't too much of a problem on my desktop, but on my laptop, I actually have the function key set to brightness and volume, like with a single tap without pressing FN. So on my laptop to summon K runner using that default, I'd take an extra key. I'd have to press Alt FN and then F2, but on a desktop, that's not a problem for me whatsoever. Next, use the store to get more applications. So we'll go into the whole Farron OS store in a moment and test it with some software package installations. But for now, we'll go to the next step. Okay, now we have theme mode. So reading through the release notes, a lot of work's gone in the whole theming, especially the dark theme. So we'll check out the dark theme as well in a moment. But again, while we're in here, let's see how easy it is to change it from the welcome tour. So we're on the default, let's switch to light. There we go, took no time at all, and it's changed the whole way our desktop looks with a nice light panel at the bottom now. And now let's switch to dark. And there we go. So we're going to go back to the default for now, but like I said, we'll go through all the themes and the different colours and all of that good stuff too. Next up, we have the accent colours. So I have written my own notes for this that, that I made sort of based off of the announcement. And then the words that jumped out at me were banana and purple. So I'm going to imagine the banana is this yellow here and the purple is right about there. So we'll go through these in just a moment as well, because I do believe the last time I checked it, there's loads of colours that you can do in the global theming, which is one of the cool things about Ferran OS. Next up, we have pair your Farron OS machine with an Android device. So I do have an Android device handy, so let's do that now. So configure KDE Connect, and we're going to be using this S9 here. So we're going to go to request pair, and you'll get a little notification come up on your phone, and you'll just have to press allow, not allow, accept. And then once you've done that, you then can have all these available plugins like sharing your clipboard, your notifications, and all of that good stuff. It's a very handy little program if you're an Android user. Okay, let's keep moving. Next up we have reduce eye strain at night. So this will change the color temperature of your screen, especially at night to save strain on your eyes. And we can just jump straight into it by going to configure night color. And as you can see there, it's opened it up in the system settings, which means we can get to it very simply by just opening up our K runner again and just typing in, for example, night and it will take you straight to it. Very nice, and let's keep going. Okay, so that is the last step of Ferran OS's welcome tour. Now we've got a little update to grab there that I can see, but before we do that, we're gonna open up Synaptic, which is included out of the box, which is a very good way to manage your packages on Ubuntu-based distributions. So as you can see there, we, it's got quite a lot of packages installed out of the box. So you've got 2,317, which might make some of you shriek, but it is set up very well, especially for a new user to have everything they need to get them up and running. So what we're gonna do now is jump into the updates and see if we've got any updates to grab and just how much we have indeed got to get. Okay, so it appears we've got a fair little bit there at 120 MB. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video with this updates and be back in just a moment. Okay, so the update has complete, but it is prompting us to do a reboot. So what I've done very quickly is also installed HTOP in the terminal here. That way we can check how much RAM we're using on a fresh boot before we make any changes to our system. Okay, we are back. And as you can see, it's not the lightest distribution ever, but it's not too crazy either. At just over 900 MB, at about 909 MB on a fresh boot. And that is with things like KDE Connect running in the background, etc. Now we do have a swap file and it's of 31.4 GB. So maybe it's also picked up a partition somewhere from inside this computer of a different distribution. So just to double check that, we are just gonna pop open our file manager, which on Ferran isn't actually Dolphin, they choose to use Nemo instead, so making a break from that traditional sort of KDE way of doing things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump straight into file system here, scroll down, so we're in our root folder, and we're gonna just go to properties to our swap file. Okay, indeed, so it is indeed 33.7 GB for our swap file. Interesting, I wasn't expecting it to be quite that large, but anyway. So let's close this now, and what we're gonna do is jump into the software and sources. So as we are now based on Ubuntu 20.04, new Google have new packages, and also it's completely removed the um, Linux Mint repository. So as you can see there, we've got Ferran OS 2020.11, KDE Plasma version 5.19.5, .5, and of course we're using 64-bit, and the only reason I'll mention that is because they are going to be removing support for 32-bit as well as discontinuing the Ferran OS Classic. 
Right, so now we're in the software sources. Of course, our Ferran OS mirror is the GitLab version, and in mirrors we are using the Ubuntu base Focal Great Britain, and we have some optional sources here that are easily to toggle on or off. So we've got the source code repos, debug symbols, unstable packages, or work in progress themes, icons, and redesign. Now in PPAs, you can see that we have the graphics drivers there, but they're also disabled. And then in additional repositories, we have Google, Vivaldi, and Wine HQ. So Wine is installed out of the box, but I believe it's a very simple install on Ferran OS. So the reason why I'm showing you this right now, because as you can see, we've got three repos here. But one of the interesting things that I read about this is the way that's going to package Chromium. So it's actually going to be using the Debian version. So when we install it using their web browser manager, I'm going to imagine it's going to populate this screen with a few more repositories from Debian. So it's done this to avoid the whole drama that happened with Ubuntu removing it in favor of Snap, because I don't think we have Snap support out of the box on Ferran at all. We don't indeed, but I think we do actually have Flatpak. We do indeed. So what we're now going to do is jump into the Web Browser Manager, which is a very handy little tool from Ferran OS, which will let you choose from some popular web browsers and install them with a couple of clicks from the single screen here. So as you can see, we have options for Google Chrome, Chromium, Microsoft Edge, which is coming soon, uh, Mozilla Firefox, Brave, Opera, Waterfox, which I do believe is based on Firefox, Falcon and Gnome Web, and of course Vivaldi being your default. So what we're going to go ahead and do is install Chromium, and then we're going to check back into our software sources and just see if it is indeed using the Debian version. So let's go ahead and click install. Do you want to install in Chromium? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to pause the video here while it is installing this package and then we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so installation is complete. It took no time at all and it was only a couple of clicks. So before we go into the software sources, we are going to open up Synaptic because we can also check the properties of individual packages from here as well. So now let's just go and search for Chromium, which we have just installed and it should appear. Bang, and there it is. So if we just go into right click into the properties here, Right, let's have a look. So as you can see there, the maintainer is the Debian Chromium team. And if we go on to version, we can also see there is indeed the Deb package, which is very cool. OK, so now if we close software sources and reopen it, it will refresh it and then we should see some additional repos. I think that's how it's going to be done. So now if we open up software and sources, we should have some additional repos now for Debian we do indeed so we now have Debian Buster and Buster update repositories there so I actually quite like that idea I think it's a good way to get Chromium on there without having to use a snap package very nice indeed okay so what we're going to do now is jump into the global theming and we're just going to check out some of these different themes here but we're mainly going to be checking out the dark theme as well as the banana and the purple but as you can see, there is really quite a lot of themes you can choose from out of the box. And I even quite like the default light theme here. Is it the light or just Ferran? Yeah, just the default theme here. Even like the right click menus look very nice and the icon theme's lovely. And the icon theme I think is called Inspire. Let's just double check that. It is indeed. So it uses the um, Inspire icon pack and we also have a dark variation. And we have a new font, a new default font for this version, which is Intel. And so far, I have no complaints. So now let's go back into the theming and test out some of these different themes. So we're going to start with some of these uh, these newer colors. So let's go for Ferran Banana. I quite like that it's called Banana and not just yellow, to be honest with you. So let's test out the light version first. There we go. As you can see, it's changed the accent color to the yellow, and that should also work when we're clicking on things. It doesn't. I thought we might have got a bit of a yellow shade on the background there. Hmm, we'll check out that in a minute as well. Okay, so let's open up a few applications then. Okay, so I don't think it actually has changed the accent color properly unless that's always going to stay on blue. Interesting. Okay, we'll check that out as well in a moment. Let's check out the Ferran OS Banana Light. Okay. There we go. So we do actually have a little shade there for our icons now, which is on the yellow. And if we open up nemo it's still blue maybe that is just the way it works in with these themes we'll check it out with a logout and the login just to make sure that we aren't going crazy so let's go for logout and login and i also have an application where you can change your sort of look and feel of the login screen which is very cool as well and i even like this screen i really like the overall design of Ferran os so let's go into logout right so here we are the login screen very nice default wallpaper there and i will show you in just a minute how you can also change that look and feel as well Okay, so we are back and let's just quickly click on these. Yep, yeah, we still have the yellow shade there. And let me just open up Nemo now. 
there we go so as you can see it has changed it with the accent colors to yellow so it just didn't want to seem to do it on the fly there but it might not do that for everyone so we'll see how we go so let's go back into global theme so what we're going to do now is check out the purple and then we're going to switch to the dark and we're probably going to stay on the dark while we check out the rest of the distribution so again we're going to try fair and purple on the dark variation there we go so it's changed the accent color there it's also changed the way this looks but we've still got the um, yellow accent colors so it looks like we might need to keep doing log outs to actually get the full effect to work but other than that it's all good okay that's the dark version there and now let's try the light there we go so we do actually have the color there working for the background on the desktop icons and now let's open up Nemo once more and again it's still got the old accent color but I'm not going to go too crazy about that so what we're going to do then is switch over to the Ferran OS dark and I am going to do a login and log out just so I make sure it's fully applied and then we can properly appreciate it without wondering if it has actually taken effect or not right and we are back so let's open up a few applications now and see how it looks with this nice dark theme nice I like it and I like the change of the um, folder icons there as well let's also go ahead and open up a few more applications so I tell you what we'll very briefly go over the default applications but we we're not going to go for everything because I do have other videos on Ferran where I've done that and I don't think too much has really changed here so in graphics we have Critter, Document Scanner, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular and Photos let's open up Photos with our dark theme there very nice indeed and now in internet of course we have installed Chromium ourselves but we also have Geary, KDE Connect, Remina for remote desktops and Vivaldi and let's see if that inherits the dark theme as well it doesn't appear to okay let's see how Chromium looks with that dark theme then yeah as I thought okay let's keep going so now in internet we've done all of that so in multimedia we have cheese and the best media player of all which is VLC and I'll use it because it will pretty much play anything you throw at it let's keep moving now I think that's everything in multimedia in office again we have the full liberal office suite and as we are now based on Ubuntu 20.04 it should be a nice recent version of 7.0.2.2 and there it is with the nice dark theming there so let's go into help and about and just confirm what version we have got and it is indeed version 7.0.2.2 and Ferran does aim to be like a pretty much a fully featured desktop uh, distribution so unlike some of the other distributions we've checked out in the past it should have dictionary support installed out of the box which it of course does okay so that is office I don't think there's much else to check out there so in science and maths again a program from the liberal office suite of math now in settings, oh okay, we have GNOME Disk, we have the firewall. Let's open up GNOME Disks because I haven't actually benchmarked this new drive yet and I'm quite intrigued. So let's go ahead and start the benchmark. Type in our password, it'll only take a second, it's going to be a fast disk. 3.2 gigabytes a second, I think I can just about deal with that. And of course it has inherited the nice dark theming there. Okay, what else have we got in settings? So while we're here, let's check out the firewall and it'll be a very simple firewall manager with some simple like incoming, outgoing, allow and all of that good stuff with your rules. It's currently disabled, but yeah, very simple firewall. I can't see anyone having any problems with that. So what else have we got in settings? So we have the theme color chooser and I actually quite like the idea of this. So I've not properly used this before. So create a new theme colorization, okay yep so it supports just the Ferran OS theme from what I can tell right so we can choose any custom all right this is going to be some fun okay let's make a, a theme <laughs> so that's my kind of color okay let's see how that looks right let's select that color did we do it there we go no color code I think it's probably because we went for the transparency so let's try that again so we're just going to type in theme and there it is so no transparency we'll try out any transparency so fair and OS theme so let's add a new custom color let's go back down to that kind of shade of blue select perfect what do you want the theme to be called obviously tech there we go okay what type oh, this is really cool so you can even like choose the different color for the shells and everything so the default is light applications dark shell but we're going to go for a dark theme because we're a dark theme kind of guy should the title bar be colored depending on the chosen color? I don't think so. Okay, let's do it. Right, so that theme has been created. Let's have a look at our new theme that we've just made. This is probably going to be horrendous. Right, let's go into global theme. And let's scroll down until we find tech. There he is. What a boy. <laughs> I'm not too sure what I think about that title bar, you know. I mean, it's not terrible. 
Okay, let's go back to the dark theme. I quite like that though. I think that's a pretty cool little application there for further customizations of the Ferran OS theming. Very nice indeed. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything we need to check out in settings. Oh, and here's the login window thing I was talking about where you can change the look and feel of your login window. Very cool indeed. So we could change the picture just by clicking that and by default we have two there, but I'm sure you can add whatever picture there you like. Okay, very nice. Okay, so that's pretty much all of the settings. So in system now, of course we have time shift, which along with rsync means you can do your rsync system snapshots. As we're using ext4 though, obviously you won't be able to do it with btrfs, uh, butterfs. So let's just close that for now. And I think that's pretty much everything I wanna check out in system and of course now in utilities, we have arc, calculator, Spectacle, which is the standard screenshot tool for KDE and then Latte Doc, which will be utilized in some of the different desktop layouts, which is what we're gonna check out next. Okay, so here we are. So of course you have the standard Breeze layout, but what we're gonna be checking out is these little blue ones here. So Cupertino is up first, which is the Mac OS inspired layout, which will give you a dock at the bottom using Latte and a panel up the top. Okay, there we go. Change it very quick and Latte should just about load right now. And of course we can go into the dock settings and customize it further. But I actually think they've done a really nice job with the dock there. And if I remember, it's also set not to auto hide. So again, it really does mimic the way macOS works out of the box. There you go. And it has full global menu support as well. Very nice indeed. Next up, we're going to check out Familiar, which is going to be a single panel layout. And I think this is the one that might use the uh, tiled application launcher. So it's moved our clock now to the bottom there instead of the sort of middle of the top screen for the standard Ferran OS layout and all of our applications are now just next to our application launcher. So pressing left super, and there you can see we have the Windows sort of themed start menu. So you can go through all of your applications like so, you have some little toggles here, and I do believe we can move all this about as well as remove pins, and can we just drag and drop? We can indeed, <laughs> that's very cool. Cool, okay, next up we're gonna check out the Redmond. So I think this is the same sort of layout with a single panel, but it uses the sort of old school way of doing your title so it's just the it's not the icon only task manager it's the task manager some quick launches there and it uses I always forget what this menu is called it's using the just the standard application menu next up we have the tablet mode which should be good for those of you that have touch input so again got our applications centered on the panel but it's made things a little bit bigger like the little button there to minimize all windows and then we also have the on-screen keyboard toggle so that would be very useful and then our application launcher at this time is the simple menu now we've saved the best to last which is of course the ubuntu unity layout there we go just wait for it bang there we go i really don't think any other desktop environment apart from obviously unity does the layout better than that so what we're going to do now is have a little play around while we're in this layout and then we'll see how we go so of course we do have a global menu as well and if we hold the start button or the super left button you'll notice we do get numbers appear on some of these applications it's not got all of them there strangely enough we'll do a reboot in a minute just to let everything take effect in fact i'm going to do a reboot now and then we'll carry on where we left off okay we are back so what we're going to do is just open a few things now and just test it out with this unity layout which of course will also have the global menu and your application launcher this time is going to be the full screen kde application dashboard which has your favorites to your left and some logout buttons and then your main applications when you go through the categories that are at your right and you can also jump into the widget section there as well. Now, what we're gonna do then is start opening a few applications up and see how it works with the global menu as well. So let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer because we know that has global menu support. Huh, it doesn't appear to have actually gone on there. Interesting. Okay, we'll have a look at why that is not behaving the way I think it should in a moment. But for now, watch these little title buttons. They are going to go to the top right of your screen, much like it would in Unity. Very nice. Okay, we're going to open up a few more applications and see if the global menu is working. There we go. So as you can see there, we now have the full global menu working. And again, full screen it. And it just gives you so much more space in an actual window there and just tidies things up a whole lot more. And once you're used to a global menu, it's very hard to go without. Right, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is go into the store and install a few applications and see how that all goes and as we have got flat packs i'm going to imagine we have flat pack support in this store 
So let's think of an application like Caden Live, for example, which we'll be using to edit this video. And as you can see there, we do indeed have the Flat Hub repository enabled in the store. Now, usually we do the flat pack install, but because we're on KDE, I have no issues with getting the native package when I'm on a KDE desktop. Now, I'm also going to grab GIMP, and depending on what version is in the native repo, we might get the flat pack, we might not. So let's just quickly go for GIMP. Right, let's check out what version this version of GIMP is on. 2.10, that's all I really need it to be. So what I'm gonna do now is pause the video, let these install, and be back in just a moment. Okay, so our packages have now been installed, so let's see how everything ties together now in the Unity layout with a global menu and all of that good stuff. So let's go to Caden Live. Nice, I love it. That's my favorite way of using Caden Live with just two panels, one on your left, one at the top, with a global menu right about there. Very nice indeed. Now, I've also managed to get LibreOffice to work. It was just having a bit of a moment earlier, but the global menu, bang, is there. And it also should work with Nemo. It does indeed, and Nemo is very easy to connect for file shares or SMB, SFTP, and all of that good stuff. So I do believe we've also got some new wallpapers to check out. So let's go to Configure Desktop. And here we are, so we have aluminium, or this isn't a new one though, aluminium, or for those of you who are American, Aluminum, I think that's how you say it. And then we have, oh, there's quite a few here. So let's test out, oh, we got a fish. Let's test out the fish. I quite like that actually. And also we have a jellyfish. I like that too. I actually overall like the design of just Ferran OS. I think they've done a really good job there of making a very pretty desktop. And also Lone Mountain. Nice, I like that too. I think I might even leave it on there for the rest of the video. Okay, so what we're going to do then is just make sure things like snapping is working with some key or shortcuts out of the box. So let's open up VLC and the files manager. Now I do believe it should work with just super left and right. Bang, it does indeed. And there you go. So Windows snapping is all set up to work out of the box using your super keys. And what we're going to do now to wrap things up is do a reboot, see how much we might have impacted the RAM overall now we've installed a few packages. And then we're just going to give some final thoughts on Ferran OS. Right, we are back, and as you can see, we have increased it a little bit by about 40 or 30 or so MB. But again, I'm not too worried about that. If we wanted it lower, we could just remove some stuff and also change the auto start. But all in all, I really like it. I've liked it for quite a while now, and it gets bonus points simply for being British-based. Now, if you've never used Ferran OS, I'd actually definitely recommend it, especially if you're a KDE guy. And it's one of the only distros out there that I don't feel the need to instantly download different icons and different themes and change everything around and in fact i can kind of get away of using the included theming and layouts to achieve a look and feel that i really like thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye